In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to interface the RS-485 serial output from the HLG-1 series high accuracy laser measurement sensors to the FPX series Panasonic PLC. Wow, nailed it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is pick out the parts that we're going to use for this demonstration. We'll go to RamcoI.com and we're going to look at Panasonic. We'll do Shop by Products. Click Sensors. Click Measurement Sensors. Under the series, we're going to be looking at the HLG1 series. And then we'll want to look for the serial output type. And so this is a listing of all of the serial output sensors that are available under the HLG1 series. And we're going to be using this sensor today. It has a 40 to 60 millimeter sensing range with a 50 millimeter center standoff. So we'll just go ahead and add that to the cart. Since this is a quick disconnect style, we'll need a quick disconnect extension cable. And we'll just go with this two meter one, add that to the cart. Then we need to pick out our PLC. So we can go back to shop by products, factory control and process, PLC Panasonic brand. And we're going to be looking at the FPX PLC. This FPX PLC uh, is AC powered, which is okay for our purposes, uh, and has a, a, a card accessory here, so we can choose this PLC, add it to the cart. And then we'll just go back, and now what we need to look for is the cassettes. Now inside the cassettes, uh, we're going to want to look for the, uh, the correct RS-485 communications cassette, and that's this one here. You'll see that it has two COM ports, uh, RS-485 communication, and this attaches to the PLC, so we'll add, add that to the cart. That's everything we need to get going, so we'll go ahead and start working on the program. The next thing we'll do is we open up uh, FPWIN Pro, and this is a copy of the, the, the program that, uh, that I wrote. Uh, the first thing that uh, you need to do is set up the COM port. And so COM port can be found under System Registers, Serial Ports, and then we'll look at COM1. First thing we're going to do is set the communication mode. This is uh, using Muticol protocol. That's the communication protocol that the uh, sensor is using with the PLC. Set it for that. Station number one. This is where you set your baud rate. You have quite a few different choices uh, and you set that on the sensor and then you have it match with what's in your uh, PLC program. Uh, and of course the 8-bit data length and the parity and stop bits. So that's that's the setup for COM1. If you noticed, on, and we talked about the, uh, the, the, the cassette, there are actually two COM ports. So technically you can connect two different laser sensors, one to each COM port, and maybe do, say, a thickness measurement. So that'll be something that we'll do in, a, in another video. The purposes of this video uh, we'll connect up one sensor to COM1. So the next thing to look at is the PLC program. Fairly straightforward. Uh, this is a function that uh, Panasonic provides that will automatically communicate uh, and, and send a read request to the sensor. And so what you do is you uh, uh, set it up to tell the sensor when to send a read request or PLC to send a read request to the sensor. Uh, 
this is a system scan pulse so every pulse it activates turns on then turns off turns on and then turns off that's on, on the PLC scan and every time that's activated it sends a read command to the sensor and pulls the measurement data out of uh, out of the, the measurement location and then puts that into the result location that DDT uh, 200 uh, uh, double integer uh, global variable that we set. The next one is a write command and so when I want to do a zero set and a zero reset I have to send it uh, a write command so this is another function and this particular case uh, tells the sensor to zero just the display when the zero just button on the HMI is pressed writes a one to the sensor address DT61 so that's the internal address in the sensor that you write to. This right here is just inverting the measurement result uh, so that when the zero set is pressed the display will read a positive number the taller the object is and a negative number the shorter the target object is. That was just something I added to make it uh, seem more logical to me. Uh, these commands are just doing the uh, uh, high, go, and low logic, uh, doing a greater than, comparing to the upper threshold level, and comparing to the lower threshold level that is set inside the HMI. And then that'll allow you to set up a good or high or low connection. And then this last rung here is just a uh, uh, I wanted to put a, a little indicating light on the HMI so that if I've pressed the zero adjust or whether it's activated, it uh, will turn uh, the LED light on the HMI on. So that's, that's the basics of uh, this program. And so now we'll go over to the HMI. This is the HMI software and this is the screen that I made. Uh, these up here are the high, go, and low output lights that are connected to the real world I.O. on the PLC. This right here is the measurement data and as you can see um, it's looking at uh, this area where there's a double integer of the inverted uh, measurement area, two words. I ended up doing uh, six digits with four on the decimal point. And then these two here are the upper and lower threshold level and so whenever you uh, press into this area here you can go in and set the upper threshold level and set the lower threshold level and it writes it to uh, these uh, these memory this memory area right here uh, and let's see uh, and this right here is the zero adjust and the zero reset Panasonic on many of their HMIs offers uh, multifunction switches which will allow you to uh, have one button do multiple things. So in this particular instance uh, when you press the button you're writing a 1 to this memory area and then you're also activating this internal relay. So that's everything on the HMI. Uh, let's go back to uh, the demo that, uh, that we've built. 